Okay, so this question asks us, an axial methyl group in methyl cyclohexane suffers from what disadvantage, okay? So, um, let's draw methyl cyclohexane up here. And then, of course, when we see these options, hopefully that automatically tells you, draw it in the terrible, okay? So you can tell what's going on. Okay, so let's draw it just in bottom line, so we know what we're drawing in chair form. Okay, so there's methyl cyclohexane. Now let's draw our chair, and I'm just gonna draw the chair form that has the methyl group in the diaxial interaction. So that's what that, the methyl group axial, okay? So axial, right? So put that methyl group there. And remember, the axial um, carbons that are on the same, or the axial positions that are on the same side of that methyl group, I want you to help me find them, okay? So we're looking at carbon one, and that axial is up, right? So it's carbon two axial, is that up? No, not, not. So are we going to have any one, two diaxial interactions? No, not, not, because this axial is down here. They're not going to interact, right? So already we can do what? Cross out a couple of the answers, right? Which ones? B and D, B and D right? Because there's no such thing as a one, two diaxial interaction. Okay? There's only one threes. Okay? So now we look over here, and how many diaxial interactions is it going to have? How many other axial groups are there that this thing can interact with? So we can, this one's going to go down. Where's this one going to go? Up. And there's a hydrogen there. Okay, and this one's going to go down, this one, up, hydrogen there, and this one, okay, so how many 1,3 diaxial interactions are there? Two, right? One there, and one there. Because you can number them differently, one, three? Well, I mean, okay, if this uh, methyl group is trying to share space with these hydrogens, how many hydrogens is it sharing space with? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's all it is, okay? It's okay. like, if I want to go sit, you know, next to Willie and Kenny here, right? I, and I'm going to, you know, sit on the same side of the table, I'm going to interact with them, you know what I'm saying? If I'm trying to get really close to them, like this, they're going to be pushing me away. And that's what a diaxial interaction is, you know? It's pushing me away. So, it's not saying how many diaxial interactions there are on the whole thing. It says what... Um, disadvantage does that methyl group specifically suffer from, okay? Because here we have one, two, and if we wanted to, there would be a third one, but that doesn't have anything to do with methyl group, okay? And of course, the same thing is down here, but again, that doesn't have anything to do with methyl group, okay? And then if we do a chair flip, of course, the methyl group's in equatorial, and we won't even have that um, problem, okay? So which one can we cancel out now, or which one do we want to circle? Circle C. Circle C, yeah. So when it says one, three, is that numbering the carbons? One, two, three. One, That's two, right three. Okay. Yeah, it's not like that, okay? Remember that numbering system for, this is just the relative placement of that. Okay. It's not like saying this is starting here and this is the second carbon and this is okay. the, it's not like that. You're just saying what is the relative positions of these two things, okay? So don't let that confuse you, because a lot of times people let that confuse you. They're like, you may have substituents on the two position and the four position, or something like that, but you could still potentially have them interacting. So watch out about that, okay? It's still called a 1-3 diaxial in that case, okay? Yeah, does that make, okay, okay, we're good with that. Any other questions on this particular problem before the video dies? It's about to be a killer.